What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's video. In this one, I'll be going over my top 10 classic JRPGs. I'm really, really excited about this one because these are the games I grew up on and honestly, they're the ones that molded my adoration for this genre. I recently made a top 10 list of JRPGs that I consider to be a masterpiece, so be sure to check that out if you haven't yet. But for this one, we're sticking to the classics. This list was tough to make because I could easily put 20 or 30 games on this list. So maybe I'll do a follow up, but for now, these are the games I wanna talk about, so let's get right into it. First up on the list, to open things up, I have Final Fantasy VI. This is an amazing game, and I can honestly say this is one of the most timeless JRPGs ever made. I come back to this one time and time again to experience the story and the characters, but not only that, the pixel art is absolutely stunning. Final Fantasy VI, also known as Final Fantasy III during its initial release, really is a timeless classic. Set in a steampunk inspired world on the brink of destruction, Final Fantasy VI follows the journey of a diverse cast, each with their own unique abilities and personal struggles. Every character is really well written and well developed and had me deeply invested in their stories throughout the duration of the game. One of the game's most defining features allows characters to learn and master magical abilities by equipping summoned creatures. This mechanic added nice depth and customization to the gameplay that may have been missing in some of the earlier Final Fantasy games. The storytelling in Final Fantasy VI is incredible and features themes of love and betrayal and redemption. I mean. There were some truly memorable moments here, and while I won't go into the details here because I don't like spoiling even the classics, but it left a lasting impact on me long after the credits rolled. This is a true masterpiece in the JRPG genre and should be played by any fan of the series. All right, moving on, next up I have Chrono Trigger. I absolutely adore this game. It has been on a lot of my lists so far. It does so many things that JRPGs have adopted over the years. Its influence on the genre is absolutely undeniable, and it still holds up as one of the best stories and gameplay experiences of all time. Set across different time periods, Chrono Trigger follows the journey of a group of heroes as they travel through history to prevent a cataclysmic event that threatens to destroy the world. The game's somewhat non-linear narrative provides you with a sense of agency and choice rarely seen in games at the time. We can't talk about Chrono Trigger though without talking about its active time battle system which combined turn-based combat with real-time elements with its seamless integration of strategy and action. Battles in Chrono Trigger are both exhilarating and strategic at the same time, and this battle system is the influence of many games even releasing today in 2024. The game's characters are obviously another highlight, each one bursting with personality and character depth. From Chrono to the mysterious frog, every character leaves a lasting impression and helped me feel deeply invested in their individual arcs. Overall, Chrono Trigger is a true masterpiece, offering a rich and immersive experience that has transcended generations. Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to the genre, this is a must play for anyone who appreciates great storytelling and innovative gameplay. All right, moving on, next up I have Earthbound. Now, if you can't tell at this point, the Super Nintendo was truly one of my favorite game consoles ever, and Earthbound still to this day holds up as one of the most unique JRPG experiences out there. Set in a modern day world, Earthbound follows the journey of Ness and his friends as they try to save the world. Along the way, you will run into a unique cast of characters that are worlds away from the traditional JRPG tropes that you're used to, and in my opinion, are honestly super memorable. Some of these characters will include psychic children, robots, talking animals, you name it all of which add to the game's charm. The game has a turn-based battle system which eschews traditional fantasy elements in favor of everyday objects and quirky enemies. You're also battling from a first-person perspective, which is quite unique and a bit jarring at first. You'll find yourself battling hippies and sentient piles of puke to fighting possessed department store mannequins. I mean, every encounter is filled with surprises and hilarious humor. It really does all add to the overall experience that really is unmatched in my opinion. Earthbound is one of a kind and honestly should be experienced by everyone in my opinion. It's not gonna resonate with every single person in the way it does with me, but just in case, 
you really should just give this one a try. It's on Nintendo Switch Online, so download it and give it a go if you haven't yet. All right, moving on. Next up, I have Tactics Ogre. This is up there with one of my all-time favorite Tactics JRPGs, and I really enjoyed revisiting it recently with the new release on Switch. Tactics Ogre follows the journey of a young knight caught in the middle of a conflict between rival factions. At the heart of Tactics Ogre lies its intricate tactical combat system, which offers a wealth of strategic options and opportunities for immense customization. You must carefully position your units, exploit terrain advantages, and utilize an array of classes and abilities to outmaneuver your opponent. It really is a challenging and satisfying experience. Another thing that sets this game apart is its branching narrative where choices have far-reaching consequences that shape the course of the story. Whether deciding the fate of some key characters or determining the outcome of the battles, every decision carries at least some weight. Honestly, not a lot of games match Tactics Ogre in my opinion, but Triangle Strategy comes close in trying to reach some of those highs, so both of these games are phenomenal, but if you haven't given Tactics Ogre a shot yet, definitely play it. Next up on the list, I have Star Ocean Second Story. This game originally released for the PlayStation in 98 and remains a really, really amazing classic in the realm of sci-fi RPGs offering one of the best sci-fi stories in games in my opinion. Star Ocean The Second Story follows the intertwined stories of two protagonists, Claude and Reyna, as they are on a quest to uncover the mysteries of an ancient alien relic known as the Sorcery Globe. Star Ocean The Second Story is another game that features that real-time combat system and allows you to control a party of characters and a more fast-paced battle system. It has a nice and robust skill system, especially for its time. You can really customize the character's abilities and strategies and really tailor the party to your preferred playstyle. I know this game was made significantly better with the recent remake, and that reminded me just how incredible this classic truly is. This still lives as one of those games that I have fond memories of as a kid. It was slept on quite a bit, so I was really shocked to see it get remade, and even more so when all the positive reviews came along. This is one of those games that should be experienced by any fan of the genre, and the remake, I think, allowed for a lot of new people to get their hands on it. And for that, I am thankful. Give this one a go if you haven't yet. All right, moving on. Next up, I have Dragon Quest V. Now, this stands as a shining example of the classic JRPG genre, as does much of the Dragon Quest series. Dragon Quest has always offered fans a rich and amazingly immersive journey filled with adventure, and I'm always excited to play a new Dragon Quest game. But 5 is one of the games that really stuck with me over the years. At its core, Dragon Quest V tells the story of the protagonist's life from childhood to adulthood. Along the way, you'll forge bonds with a colorful cast of characters, including loyal companions and even some monsters thrown in there, each contributing to the game's deep narrative what sets Dragon Quest V apart, though, is its innovative monster taming system, which allows you to recruit and train monsters to fight alongside them in battle. I always love it when games do this. It reminds me of my Pokemon days, and that gameplay loop always digs its claws into me every single time. Dragon Quest V is really known for its timeless storytelling as well. As with much of the series, Dragon Quest V has an amazing story. The game's narrative is filled with twists and turns that keep you invested from start to finish, culminating in an ending that is both epic and satisfying. Ultimately, Dragon Quest V is a timeless classic that continues to be one that I come back to time and time again. Whether you're a longtime fan of the Dragon Quest series or kind of a newcomer trying to get into some more popular JRPG series, Dragon Quest V is one you absolutely should play. Next up on the list, I have Secret of Mana. I actually missed out on this one back in the day and played it much, much later and realized I missed out on something really, really special. Set in a world threatened by the Empire, Secret of Mana follows a young hero and his crew as they seek to restore the power of the Mana Sword. Along the way, you'll get to traverse some really, really cool environments. And this is one of those games that really just pops. I mean, the classic SNES JRPGs had some truly amazing artwork that still holds up so well today. I actually think that the original at times is better and looks better than the remake that recently came out. I love Secret of Mana, the original game. It has a real-time battle system, which I really liked for the time as well. You have the ability to switch between characters on the fly and utilize a variety of weapons, magic spells, 
battles are more fast paced than some of the turn-based games, but it remains strategic to a certain extent. One of the game's most interesting features though is its cooperative mode, which allows you to add two additional players to join the game. The multiplayer aspect does add an extra layer of enjoyment in my opinion. Overall, Secret of Mana is definitely a timeless classic that continues to be a game I enjoy playing and returning to. Whether you're revisiting it or playing it for the first time, you got to give this one its credit. This is a classic that can't be missed. Next up, I wanna give some love to Tales of the Abyss. Now, I am a huge Tales fan, but I do recognize some of the games are far better than others. They really hit on some of the releases, but I've played some Tales games that were quite bad as well. Luckily, Abyss leans on the side of great. I have some amazing memories with this game and really enjoyed my time with it. In Tales of the Abyss, you'll follow the story of Luke, who finds himself thrown into a whirlwind of events after some stuff goes down early in the game. The game is mostly about the main protagonist trying to uncover his past to prevent horrible things from happening. It's very traditional JRPG in its storytelling, but I really enjoyed the story and the characters and the way things unfold throughout the game, it all just comes together really nicely. Tales of the Abyss had some great gameplay, but it's pretty standard in terms of Tales mechanics. But this one isn't just about its gameplay in my opinion, it's also about the characters. I think that's what stuck with me the most and I can say for sure that looking back on the game, this one had some of the best writing in the series. I know everyone might not agree, but that's how I feel. Overall, Tales of the Abyss is a must play for fans of JRPGs and especially those that like great storytelling in their games. With its captivating narrative, engaging gameplay, and memorable characters, it's a game that will stick with you long after you finish it. All right, moving on, I have Chrono Cross. Now, this is one of those games that it's heavily slept on in my opinion and deserves more love for sure. The re-release brought some new fans in and that's always great. They hadn't experienced it before, so I'm happy for that. But this is a really special game to me and one that really left a lasting impression. This is a game that will take you through time and alternate realities. It's a classic JRPG that continues to be incredible. It has an incredibly intricate narrative, some amazing visuals, and a great soundtrack. Chrono Cross follows the story of a young man who finds himself transported to a parallel universe after a mysterious encounter with a creature known as the Frozen Flame. Now you see some games will have characters that are kind of just there, but one of the reasons I love JRPGs is you get some experience with side characters that have the potential to resonate with you even more so than the main protagonist. And I feel like you get that here with Chrono Cross. What truly sets Chrono Cross apart is its world building. I mean, the amazing characters and incredible music, every location feels rich and alive with detail. It really is an amazing experience from start to finish and every aspect comes together to make this really cohesive JRPG that is actually one of my favorites. At its heart, Chrono Cross is quite philosophical at times, exploring some really complex themes I mean, at times you're encouraged to contemplate the consequences of your actions. Overall, this one really left a lasting impression long after I finished it. Give this game a try if you haven't yet. It's definitely worth playing. All right, finally, I have Suikoden 2. This classic JRPG continues to be one that fans of the genre recommend as a must play. Admittedly, I was a little late to the party for this one and only recently jumped in and man, was I missing out. This game is absolutely incredible. It has a sprawling narrative, super engaging gameplay, and some of the most memorable characters. Now, Suikoden 2 follows the story of a young hero caught in the midst of political intrigue. As you navigate alliances and conflicts, you'll recruit a vast army of unique characters, each with their own skills and abilities. One of Suikoden 2's best features, in my opinion, is that you can command armies in large-scale strategic battles, whether leading troops into battle or engaging in those one-on-ones, these encounters add a layer of depth and strategy to the gameplay that was missing from a lot of games at the time. This game isn't just about its gameplay though, it's also about its incredible storytelling and character development. Every interaction feels meaningful and impactful and pulled me deeper into the world. I could definitely see why it came highly recommended this is one of those games that was missing from a lot of my top 10 lists simply because I hadn't played it all the way through. And every time there were people in the comments recommending it to me. So finally, 
going in and playing it last year was well, well worth it. So if you were like me and you put this one off and haven't gotten to it yet, please give this one a go. You won't regret it. Well, everyone, that's it for my top 10 list of best classic JRPGs. These are games that really stuck with me over the years. Being a longtime fan of the genre, I can honestly say that I can make three or four more of these classic lists. There's just so many I thoroughly enjoyed. If there's any games you feel should have made the list, then be sure to let me know in the comments below. I have a Discord for us, so drop in and say hello if you'd like. I'll leave a link in the description. And until next time, I'm out.